Hello, 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 and welcome to Silver City Community Theater Radio Hour. I'm going to get my mouth around that eventually. Hi, everyone. I'm Wendy Spurgeon. Your host is here with weekly radio theater entertainment, meticulously edited by Chris Wellman of Mystic Way Productions and featuring the fresh, locally sourced talent of Silver City Community Theater. <laughs> And you're hearing this at Gila Membris Community Radio, KURU 89.1 FM, Silver City, New Mexico, online at gmcr.org. Oh, huzzah! We are a brand new program here on Kuru, and we're super excited to be connecting with you today on our very first episode of SCCT Radio Hour. And maybe some of you caught our pilot episodes we produced a few months ago in March for Kuru's March Pledge Drive. And oh, it was great fun. Um, we did some classics. Uh, we had some Abbott and Costello's Who's On First. We had some Dragnet and Father Knows Best as well as some fine classic sci-fi, The Tenth Planet. We even got some really talented kids from Aldo Leopold Charter School involved with an Alice in Wonderland inspired radio play called Mad Tea Party. Great entertainment. So, hey, if you missed out or if you'd like to hear them again, you can catch the replays at www silvercitycommunitytheater.com under the events tab. But in the meantime, you are in for some great entertainment in this hour, starting with the Bickersons and following that up with an episode of Little Orphan Annie. Anybody out there remember the Bickersons? It's some funny stuff. Um, well, I believe the actual show title was the honeymoon is over, but over time, people just started to refer to it as just the Bickersons. Okay, according to Wikipedia, the Bickersons was a radio comedy sketch series that began September 8th, 1946. It continued until August 28th, 1951. The show's married protagonists, portrayed by Don Amici, later by Lou Parker, and Francis Langford spent nearly all their time together in relentless verbal war. Well, we have brought in some fine local comic actors, Mel Gelb and Liz Michaels. Now they did an episode for the March Fun Drive and it was such a hit that we decided to have them come back for our first of some recurring episodes of SECT Radio Hour. So they're gonna open us up for our very first official show. This, whatever day this is, momentous day in May, 2021. All right, so what you're going to hear is known as the Easter episode and the original broadcast date is unknown, but it apparently came out around Easter. And we've got a very talented young man, Monty Valenzuela, reading the announcer. And we've got Mel Gelb as John and Liz Michaels as Blanche. So without further ado, we hope you enjoy The Vickersons. <laughs> And now, Mel Gelb and Liz Michaels as John and Blanche Bickerson in The Honeymoon is Over. The Bickersons have retired. It is close to three o'clock in the morning, and Mrs. Bickerson lies tense and sleepless in the dark, as poor husband John, victim of raucous insomnia, reaches a climax during an acute attack of his strange ailment. Listen. <laughs> He'll stop, no. I know he will. <laughs> He'll stop now. I know he will. <laughs> oh, dear. 
here. John, turn over on your side. Go on. Oh, what's the matter? What's the Blanche? What's the matter? There isn't another woman in the world who sacrificed her youth and her looks to live with a man who rattles himself to sleep like a lot of old bones in a bag. What do you think I'm made of, John? Old bones. You've got to stop it. Stop what? That snoring. Oh, it, it's just your imagination, Blanche. I never snore. John Dickerson, how can you say that? Very easy. Just listen. I never snore. I never snore. I never... John! Oh, what's the matter? Why don't you let me sleep, Blanche? What about me? What am I supposed to do while you grind away like a buzzsaw? I never sleep at all. You were fast asleep when I came home from my lodgement. What time did you come in? I don't know. Put out the lights. You said that you'd have one drink and get home at ten. Well, I had ten drinks and got home at one. You knew where I was all the time. Now don't start beefing about it. I didn't know where you were. I, I would have called. What for? Because the express man came around again with that package. It's from Kentucky, and there's freight charges on it. Well, why didn't you pay him? I, I've been waiting for that package. What is it? It's my dividend. I belong to the Bottle of the Month Club. Bottle? 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 I'm just sick and tired of the way your whole life is wrapped up in a bottle of bourbon. Maybe you'd like me better. If I wore a label and put a cork in my mouth. You needn't wear a label, Blanche. There you go with your subtle insults again. When am I supposed to talk to you? You rush away in the morning and come home at night when I'm sleeping. Oh, sit up and talk to me, John. <sighs> Blanche, I'm dead tired. I don't know what time I came home. But I was in the kitchen for over an hour. I know. I heard you puttering around in there. I wasn't puttering. You asked me to fix the electric toaster and the curling iron, didn't you? Well, I fixed them both. Do they work? They work fine. Except the toast pops up with a permanent. That doesn't surprise me. Did you turn off all the lights? Turned off all the lights. I suppose you left a mess in the kitchen. No mess. I hope you locked the back door. The cat got out three times last week. Cat won't get out tonight. Where'd you put him? In the birdcage. The birdcage? Where's the canary? In the cat. John Bickerson. Oh, stop knocking yourself out. Nothing happened to the canary. And the cat's fast asleep in the stove. Well, don't scare me like that. Are you sure all the animals are taken care of? I'm sure. How about the fish pump? Did you heat up the water for the new baby goldfish? I heated this water, gave him this pablum, burped him twice, and changed his diaper. Will you let me put out the light and let me sleep? Why are you so cross and disagreeable all the time, John? <sighs> of course, I'm exhausted. That's not true. You'd rather stay out the whole night carousing with your rough nut friends. It just kills you to spend the night with me. No, it doesn't kill me. It's a funny thing, but I don't need anybody else. I'm always satisfied just to be with you. Well, you're in better company than I am. Good night, Blanche. Keep it up, John. Keep adding insults to injury. Adding injury. Never a kind word or a compliment. No, never. Just work me to death like a slave. Pick up my meals and complain about my cooking. I never complain about your cooking. Then why didn't you eat that pie I made tonight? I did eat it. I ate every bit of it. You didn't like it. I couldn't chew it. The undercrust was like cardboard. Undercrust? 
Yes. That pie didn't have any undercrust. I gave it to you on a paper plate. Well, the plate tasted better than the pie. Don't make pies anymore. I hate pies. I hate all desserts, especially that orange meringue broccoli dream cake you make. Uh, don't make me any more desserts. I never know what to make for you. You've got the weirdest appetite of any man alive. For two months running, you wouldn't eat anything but pig's knuckles. Pig's knuckles, pig's knuckles. What about it? Just because you wanted pig's knuckles, I had to cook my fingers to the bone. Why don't you hire a chef? Uh... I cook for you. I scrub for you. I sew for you. Do I get any thanks? Thanks. Thanks? That's all the thanks I get. No love. No affection. How I envy Louise Shaw. Her husband treats her more like a friend than a wife. Oh, settle down. Will you blanch? No, I won't. You think Louise ever makes breakfast for now? Not that lazy look. She makes him go to work every day without a morsel of food. Just a kiss for breakfast. Would you be satisfied with that? Sure. Send her over in the morning. I mean, would you be satisfied if I gave you a kiss for breakfast? Blanche, I'd be satisfied with anything if you just let me get some rest. Answer me. Do you want a kiss for breakfast? Yes. Well, ask for it. Blanche, I want a kiss for breakfast. Don't do me any favors. I never let you kiss me again as long as you live. Not until you apologize. Apologize for what? What have I done? It's what you haven't done. You haven't told me you love me for years. Why don't you say you're sorry you married me? Because I'm not. Am I the only wife in the world for you? You're the only wife in the world for me. You're lying. Swear. I swear I'm lying. What? I mean, uh, I'm not lying. Well, that's no way to swear. Say it nicely. <sighs> You're the only wife in the world for me. Really, John? Really. I wouldn't have another wife like you for anything. I'd known more about you before we were married. Oh, you knew everything. I didn't know about that tattoo you had on your stomach. That's a real indication of a man's character. I wish I'd known. Now, wait a minute. I had that tattoo put on my stomach when I was just a silly kid. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. A cool girl with a big dimple on her chin. That dimple was there before she was. Don't go digging up my stomach at this time of the night. Why don't you have that ugly picture removed? <sighs> okay. I'll have it removed in the morning. You say it, but you won't do it. Have it done now. What? Go on. Get up and get rid of that fool girl. Are you out of your mind? It's almost four o'clock in the morning. You'd get rid of it fast enough if you were married to Gloria Gooseby. Ooh. Now don't start with Gloria Gooseby. She'd holler plenty if you didn't do what she liked. I always do what she likes, and she never hollers. I, I mean, I mean, I hate the sight of Gloria Gooseby. I never want you to mention her name again. Do you hear me? Don't yell at me. I'm sick. Sick? Dr. Hershey told me there's something the matter with my head. You didn't have to say you paid a doctor for that. Make fun if you like, but I know I won't last long. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Are you really sick? So sick I could die. I think I'm poisoned. I've got the most awful indigestion. Call the doctor, John. You don't need the doctor. I can take care of it. Lie still, and I'll fry you some radishes and hot sauerkraut juice. Radishes and hot sauerkraut juice? Finest cure in the world for indigestion. Lie still now. 
John Dickerson, I don't want any of your insane remedies. You'll treat me for indigestion and I'll probably die of liver trouble. Listen, if I treat you for indigestion, you'll die of indigestion. Now, do you want me to help you or not? I'll feel a lot better if you just didn't scream at me and tell me you love me. Uh, I knew you weren't sick. Tell me you love me, John. I love you. How much do you love me? How much do you need? Well, John, Easter Sunday is only two days away, and I haven't got a new hat. What happened to the hat you bought last Easter? It's in a box on the dresser, but that hat's worn out. Well, wear the box. I can't be spending my money on a hat. Please, John, just this once. I saw a wonderful hat with a reversible brim that can be turned up or down. How much is it? Sixty dollars. Turn it down. Turn it down. Turn it down. I turn everything down because you're always looking for bargains. But when you married me, you didn't get any bargains. How well I know it. Oh, you know what I mean. You only like the kind of women who, who would pass up a mink coat to buy a cheap fur. Well, what's wrong with buying a cheap fur? Nothing. Would you like to see the one I bought, dear? What? It's a dyed rabbit choker, and it only costs $94. $94 for a dead rabbit? Don't get started. Blanche, how can you squander my money like that? I deny myself everything. Last week, I had all my teeth pulled out to save money on eating. I've been sewing collars on your old bloomers and wearing them for shirts. I haven't even got a pair of pants. Yesterday, I hung a wisp broom from your plaid skirt and went to work dressed as a Scotsman. <sighs> and she spends $94 on an Easter rabbit. All right, all right, I'll take it back. I never knew you could be so mean. Oh, take it back. I wish my poor granddaddy was still alive. He'd never let you treat me like this. All of a sudden, you've got a granddaddy? I never heard you mention him before. He was the best friend I ever had. I took his advice on everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. He could have settled a lot of our problems. I bet he'd tell you to let me keep that choker. How do you know? Because I know. And when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask him. <laughs> Suppose he isn't in heaven. Then you can ask him. Good night, Blanche. Good night, John. Hooray! Wasn't that awesome? Great job, Monty, Mel, and Liz. Now, if you're just tuning in now, my name is Wendy Spurgeon, and you are listening to Silver City Community Theater Radio Hour with an homage to the golden age of radio. Now, if you missed our pilot episodes, you can catch them again at www.silvercitycommunitytheater.com under the events tab. And this is Gila Members Community Radio, KURU 89.1 FM, Silver City, New Mexico, online at gmcr.org. And coming up next, we have another blast from the past. It's Little Orphan Annie. But before we share that, I want to thank and acknowledge Chris Wellman of Mystic Way Productions for the audio editing and special effects this show would not be possible without you. Thank you, Chris. And if you didn't know, uh, Silver City Community Theater is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Donations are made tax deductible and welcome at www.silvercitycommunitytheater.com. Uh, we are a community theater. SCCT is committed to promoting uh, community theater opportunity 
for residents of Southwest New Mexico in all aspects of theater, stage work, publicity, acting, and costuming. Our objective is to enrich, educate, and entertain with a vibrant range of live theater experiences year round. Yes, and we're getting back to that. We are optimistic that as more people are receiving vaccinations, we will be able to offer live theater performances, workshops, and casting opportunities for our community. So stay tuned for a possible theater in the park experience, perhaps as soon as the summer. As I learn more, I'll be sharing it right here on SECT Radio Hour. And by the way, we're holding auditions. We are having so much fun. Why not join in? So if you, you know, it, a lot of people just have some fun kind of character voices. And have you ever wanted to play a character voice in a radio play? Well, now here's a chance to perform in a low pressure, uh, but highly creative radio program recording for from the comfort and safety of your home because you zoom in your voice. We may move to a situation where we're recording in a big room, but it, for now we're zooming in, we're zooming in our audio. And how much fun would it be to record uh, an episode of Abbott and Costello or my favorite husband, Burns and Allen? The Lone Ranger, you know, we choose from a variety of scripts. Um, auditions are on Saturdays from 10 a.m. to noon through the end of the month. So every Saturday, uh, you just got to go in and sign up. Uh, super easy uh, for information and to sign up. Go to thewayoftruth.live forward slash radio and the radio is all caps the way of truth dot live forward slash radio so our auditions are they're very fun they're low stress you just bring your favorite monologue or poem or song keep it short under two minutes uh, there's no need to memorize or to be on camera we're listening for the quality of your audio and a solid vocal presence and you may receive an email with scripts and original recordings in advance so that you can prepare for cold readings during the auditions. It really just kind of depends. Um, and once cast, the actors will receive scripts, songs, and recordings um, and have at least a week uh, prior to the recording. You'll have an opportunity to rehearse with scene partners prior to the recordings. And seriously, it is so much fun. So again, for audition information and signups, go to the way of truth live forward slash radio and the radio is in all caps. Um, okay, so I'm going to say without any further ado, Silver City Community Theater Radio Hour and Mystic Boy Productions present Little Orphan Annie. Uh, now, this episode was titled, Mr. Flint is Selling Stock in a Toll Bridge, and its original air date is unknown. And this, this will probably bring back some memories. So the show was sponsored by Ovaltine and was originally broadcast in 1936. Now, full confession, being a theater nerd in the 80s and 90s, I was more familiar with the Broadway show and movie Annie, right? The sun will come out tomorrow, right? Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun, right? And it's a hard knock life for us. I, I can't tell you how many times I choreographed that song in an orphanage, right? I, I digress. But then I heard snippets of the original radio play when I watched uh, Christmas Story um, that, you know, with Peter Billingsley, remember? Yeah, so remember how excited he was to receive Annie's secret decoder ring and official book of secrets in the mailbox after like meticulously saving and mailing all of those inner seals from the old teen lids. So 
Uh, just heads up, I'm reading the announcer part, the Pierre Andre part. So you're going to hear my take on that classic oval team pitch. And I got to say, it was so fun to do. But I found out after a bit of research that these kinds of commercials aimed at kids are, are like no longer legal. <laughs> so kids, if you're listening, uh, I'm just acting. Disclaimer. I don't endorse any product. So, you know, as good as I am, I'm just acting. Try hard to suspend your disbelief and please don't bug your parents to buy you Ovaltine, okay? That's not on me. All right, okay, so, okay, what else? So, yes, I'm also playing Mr. Flint in the episode. And I tried to give a very different voice and character from the Pierre Andre, right, the announcer. So to my ear, I don't sound like a man in either role. So I'll, again, ask you to temporarily suspend your disbelief. Uh, everyone else is in the cast is just awesome. I mean, they just really did a great job. Uh, in the role of Little Orphan Annie, we have Mia Riley. Um, Mia is in the seventh grade at Aldo Leopold Charter School. Got to know her a few seasons ago when she played Tiny Tim when I directed Scrooge and Dickens at uh, Oasis Coffee and Tea House. So you're going to love her voice as Little Orphan Annie. Uh, as Joe Corntassel, we have Monty Valenzuela. So Monty has voiced a lot of parts with us so far. And we are fortunate to have that youthful energy in the acting company. It's just great. Uh, Mr. Silo is being played by Greg Jurett. Greg's really awesome to work with as an actor and really fun karaoke host too. And his neighbor, my good friend Gay Rock is playing Mrs. Silo. I love working with Gay. She is my vocal coach and you may remember her shop downtown, the Rock Center. She was our favorite dog groomer and people are bummed she retired from the dog grooming part of her business. I mean, that that's closed now, but she still teaches voice and metaphysical workshops out of her home. So you should get to know Gay. Um, she does a really great job as Mrs. Silo. Uh, you know, she's mostly known for singing, but she's been bravely putting herself out to try acting and we are blessed for it. I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, yeah, then there we have me as Mr. Flint and as the announcer, Pierre Andre, and I've already disclaimed. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we present Little Orphan Annie. Mr. Flint is selling stock in Tollbridge. It's adventure time with Orphan Annie. It's 5.45 now and time to hear about Orphan Annie's adventures. All about Ovaltine, too. And if you haven't tried Ovaltine yet, here's something I want to ask you. Do you get so fidgety and fussy in school that your teacher scolds you for not paying attention? And then when your report card comes, do you get such poor marks that your mother and father worry about it and perhaps scold you, too? Well, maybe it's not all your fault. You know, doctors say that some boys and girls don't get along so well in school no matter how hard they try because they're kind of nervous and high strung. And if that's your trouble, perhaps Ovaltine's the thing to help you. Because every cup full of Ovaltine not only gives you important minerals and vitamins to help build you up, but it also brings you that 
special important vitamin you may have to have so you don't get so nervous. Yes, sir. Old routines help lots of nervous boys and girls to feel better. So ask your mother to let you start on Ovaltine too. But the main thing is to keep drinking it regularly. Remember, it's the person who keeps on trying who usually wins out, you know. And after a while, just see if you don't begin to feel better and find schools lots easier and perhaps you'll begin to get higher marks too. Nobody will scold you then. And your mother and father will be mighty proud of you. Just try Ovaltine. See what a big difference it may make. But now, all you new 1936 members of Annie's Secret Society, attention! Right after tonight's adventure's over, we are going to broadcast another important secret message in Annie's new 1936 secret radio code. So get your pencils ready and be sure to keep listening. And now for our adventure. Yesterday, Mr. Warbucks brought Annie, Joe, and Sandy home to the silos. And believe me, it was a mighty happy reunion. The only sad thing about it was that Daddy Warbucks had to go right back to New York. And now Annie and Joe are standing on the silo's back porch, looking across the farm and the fields. And if you don't think they're glad to get back, just listen to what Joe's saying now. Shucks. Just look out there, Annie, across the barnyard and over those fields towards the woods. Did you ever see anything so pretty in all your life? Yes, I never did, Joe. I'll say you didn't. With those patches of snow on the fields and the green and brown beginning to show through, boy, oh boy, it sure looks like home to me. Yeah, me too. Just listen to that cow. Isn't that the nicest music you ever heard? Sounds pretty good, all right. And boy, oh boy, listen to that. Say, there was never anything sounded better to me than a rooster. I guess I feel the same way as you do, Joe. I guess we're just a couple of farmers. I'll say we are. You know, Annie. What? When I went home yesterday. I bet your mother was glad to see you, Joe. Glad? She caught me right up in her arms, Annie. And then she started crying. Shucks, I guess I cried a little too myself. And you know, Annie, Peter and Paul cried too. They did? Sure. They were so glad to see me. Peter started it. And with being twins, I guess Paul thought he ought to cry too. Anyhow, it was swell people wanting you like that and being glad to see you. Seems like the whole countryside is glad to see us today. Land sakes alive! What are you children standing out there on the porch for? We were just looking around, Mrs. Silo, being glad we're home. Appears to me that's a funny way to be glad. Now, if you want to be really glad, come in the kitchen now. Boy, uh, oh boy, I smell cookies cooking. That's just what you do, Joe Corntassel. I might know. No matter how long you were away, you can still smell my cookies. Well, come in and get them. Boy, will we. Come on, Annie. I thought you children would begin sniffing around Ma's kitchen pretty soon. Now look out, Joe. Don't rush with them cookies. They're hot. Shucks, it's been so long since I had any homemade cookies. I don't care how hot they are. Here, Annie. Better have one of these cookies before Joe eats more than his share. Boy, oh boy, they're good. I'll have another one. Appears to me, Joe, you've got all you can handle in your mouth right now. But go ahead. It makes me feel like old times to see the two of you eating my baked goods. Hmm. Seems like old times to me, too. I swear to goodness, now that I've got you both back, it don't hardly seem you've ever been away. Things are just the same as they used to be. <laughs> both of you hungry and eating up things as fast as I can cook them. No. Nah. Things ain't quite the same, though, Ma. Well, what do you mean? Well, folks are the same, but things aren't. Since you've been gone, Simmons Corners have been growing into big business. Big business? What do you mean, Mr. Silo? What Paul means, Annie, is that a man has come here from the city, a Mr. Taylor Flint, and he's going for things in a big way. Things? What sort of things? Well, he's opened a new bank. As if one bank wasn't enough for Simmons Corners. And he's 
put up a big electric sign over it, as if signs could get people to have money in their pockets. Now, Ma, you're not looking at this in the right way. Mr. Flint's a big man. Besides, his new bank, Annie, all the time you and Joe have been gone, he's been starting to build a bridge. A bridge? Yeah, a bridge across the river. You see, the way things are now, when folks want to go west, they have to drive clear down to Sunfield and cross the river there. But with this new bridge Mr. Flint's building, are paying a toll, they cross the bridge here at Simmons Corner. That means folks will save more than 18 miles driving west. Seems like an awful swell idea. That's just what I've been trying to tell Ma. The idea might be all right, Pa. It's the man I don't like. Why, what's the matter with Mr. Flint, Ma? I don't know. Maybe nothing's the matter with him. It's just that I don't seem to take a hankering to him. Maybe it's that stiff collar he wears, or, or his city ways. Oh, that's no reason for not liking a person, Ma, and you know it. Well, maybe I do, but I still can't help my likes and dislikes, can I? Mm, don't know what you can help, but it don't seem to me... Say, isn't that a car out in our driveway? Oh, say it is. I can see it from the window. Leaping lizards. It's the biggest car I've ever seen in my life. It's bigger than any of Daddy Warbucks's. I say it is. Shucks, look at it shine. There's a man getting out, too. Jumping grasshoppers. He looks like the president or something. From the way he's dressed. Boy, oh boy. Look at that long coat and high silk hat. Gosh, whoever he is, he must be somebody. It's Mr. Flint. That's who it is. It's Mr. Flint, the man who's building a new bridge. Now, what could he be wanting here? I don't know, Ma. But anyhow, he wants to come in. Well, I guess you better let him in, Paul. <clears throat> oh, oh, good day, Mr. Silo. Good day. I was just passing by here. I thought it might be well to come in and meet you. I want to get better acquainted with the leading citizens in the county, so I thought I'd stop. Well, come in, Mr. Flint. Come in. Thank you. Thank you. I shall. Uh, uh, this is, uh, Mrs. Silo, Mr. Flint. I'm mighty pleased to meet you, Mrs. Silo. I've heard a lot about you in Simmons Corner, especially at the church. Well, I'm a God-fearing man, and I like to know church members. Well, that's, that's mighty nice of you, Mr. Flint. Not at all, not at all. Since my venture into business here in Simmons Corners, one of the finest garden spots on this earth, I felt I want to get better acquainted with all the charming people who live here. Hmm. Hard to know what to say, Mr. Flint. You sort of take me by surprise. Oh, meet Annie and Joe Corntassel. How do you do? How do you do? My, if there's anything I love, it's children. Well, I was never blessed with any myself, but that doesn't affect my feelings for them. I am mighty glad to meet you, both of you. How do you do? Hello. Two mighty husky bright children. My, you ought to be congratulated, Mr. Silo. Well, uh, you see, they don't exactly belong to Ma and me. Well, just having them in your house tells me a lot about your character, Mr. Silo. Anyone with two bright young children like this around couldn't help being progressive. Well, I've always thought I've kept up with the times. Of course you do, of course you do. That's one reason I dropped in to see you. Now everyone tells me, Mr. Silo, that you're one of the most prosperous citizens in our community. And speaking of churches, Mrs. Silo, it may interest you to know that I have just donated a new pipe organ to our church. Well, land sakes, that's wonderful, Mr. Flint, simply wonderful. Why, nothing at all, I assure you. Giving this organ to the church is a, a great pleasure to me. But speaking of the bridge, Mr. Silo, we were speaking of the bridge. <clears throat> uh, yes, yes, of course. Being one of the leading citizens, I thought I'd give you a chance to get in on the ground floor, so to speak. Now, this bridge is going to be a community affair. Of course, 
I could finance it with a partner from New York, but I felt that you people who live here on this spot should have a chance to share in the profits. That's mighty nice of you, Mr. Flynn. Why not at all? Whenever I have an enterprise, I like the community to share in it. That's why I picked one of the other leading citizens, a uh, Luke Poole, to handle the stock for me. Luke Poole? Yes, indeed. One of your enterprising businessmen. I thought it would be better if he sold the stock rather than I, inasmuch as you all know him. We know him, all right. I beg your pardon? N nothing. And so would you like to invest, Mr. Silo? Oh, a few hundred dollars in a sure thing? Well, just get in touch with either me or Mr. Poole. It's a marvelous stock you're buying, and you can't go wrong. Buying? Why, of course. All leading citizens in the county are buying, Mr. Silo. And I know you want to be in on the ground floor with the rest of them. That's why I dropped in to give you this opportunity. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Silo. So nice to have met you. Oh, I know we'll all enjoy the music of that new organ. Bye, Mr. Flynn. I don't know how we ladies will ever thank you for that wonderful organ. Why, well, pray don't mention it, Mrs. Silo. The pleasure's all mine. Well, goodbye, children. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, well, I'm thinking of donating the village a playground, children, with all sorts of things for you to play with. I know you'll like it. Well, goodbye, Mr. Silo. Come in and see me when you want that stock. My, oh, my, how I misjudged that man. Misjudged him? What do you mean, Ma? Why, he's wonderful. Simply wonderful. Think of him, donating that new organ to the church. Nobody in Simmons Corners has ever done anything like that before. Shucks, they sure haven't. We must buy some of that stock in the new bridge, Paul. If Mr. Flint's behind it, I am sure it must be a fine thing. Well, I'll think it over, Ma. If I were you, Mr. Silo, I'd think it over awful well. Why, Annie, whatever do you mean? All I mean, Mrs. Silo, is that it strikes me Mr. Flint is a little too generous. People who go around giving things away like that usually expect to get something back. And unless I'm wrong, they expect to get back twice as much as they ever gave. Well, what do you think of this Mr. Flint? Mr. Silo certainly likes him, doesn't he? And Mrs. Silo too. But say, do you think Annie's got the right idea about him? Do people who give away things, as Mr. Flint is doing, expect to get twice as much back? What do you think of Mr. Flint? But now, attention, everybody, please, for an important secret message broadcast in Annie's new 1936 Mystery Radio Code. So all you 1936 members get your pencils and papers ready to take it down. First, we always give you the special code key. And tonight's secret message is coming in the 021 code. Did you get that? 021 is the special code key for tonight's secret message. So write 021 down on your paper right now so you won't forget it. And here's the secret message itself. First word, 24, 12, 12, 17, 13. Second word, 14, 17, Six, seventeen, twenty-six, six. Third word, fifteen, twenty-four, twenty-two, thirteen, six. Fourth and last word, thirteen, four, one, twenty-one, twenty. 17, 
19, 4. That's all. And that was another secret message in Annie's new 1936 mystery radio code. So all you 1936 members who have your super decoder pins and secret books, get busy and figure it out right now. Just set your super decoder pin at 0 to 1, the way I told you to before I read the message, and it figures the whole thing out for you in a jiffy. And say, if you haven't sent in for your 1936 membership yet, and are missing out on all the fun of figuring out these secret messages from Annie, you certainly want to get busy and join right away. Remember, it's absolutely free if you are drinking your Ovaltine regularly, because here's all you have to do. Just print your name and address plainly on a piece of paper, then mail it in together with all of the thin round aluminum seal from underneath the lid of a can of Ovaltine to Little Orphan Annie, Chicago, Illinois. Or if you live in Canada, mail it to Ovaltine, Peterborough, Ontario. That's all there is to it. And then Annie sends you the beautiful gold colored super decoder pin and the new 1936 official book of secrets. Get busy and send it in this very night. And be here right on time tomorrow at 545 because there's going to be an awful lot happening in Simmons Corners from now on. Excitement you don't want to miss. We'll see you tomorrow at 545 then. Goodbye. <laughs>an Annie cast great job oh and wow folks uh, I gotta say after playing that Mr. Flint character and hard selling all that Ovaltine I kind of feel like I want to take a shower <laughs> and uh you just heard that on Kila Membris Community Radio, KURU 89.1 FM, Silver City, New Mexico, online at gmcr.org. And this is Wendy Spurgeon, your hostess on Silver City Community Theater Radio Hour. Uh, if you tuned in late or if you want to listen to a replay of this episode or um, maybe some of our pilot episodes we did in March, just go to www dot silver city community theater dot com and click on the events tab we are a 501c3 nonprofit performing arts organization which means your donations in any amount are tax deductible heck we even got a tax guy william ken newton and on our board if you had any questions about how that works um, so if community theater has made a difference in your life you can make a difference in the life of this community theater. Again, we're holding auditions every Saturday from 10 to noon through the end of the month. Super fun, easy, low stress. Check out all the details and sign up at thewayoftruth.live slash radio. And radio is all caps. And tune in again next week at this time for our second official show, SECT Radio Hour presents Amanda of Honeymoon Hill and special guest Sarah Thrasher in The Littlest Angel, as well as some more behind the scenes gossips and laughs. So thank you for listening. This has been Silver City Community Theater Radio Hour. I'm Wendy Spurgeon, your hostess, here with weekly radio entertainment, meticulously edited by Chris Wellman of Mystic Way Productions and featuring the fresh, locally sourced talent of Silver City Community Theater. <laughs>